Hi, my name is Wes McKinney and I'm here to give you a quick overview of some of the things you can do with the Pandas Library for Python. I just wrote this book, uh, published in last October, uh, Python for Data Analysis, so if you're interested in these kinds of tools, I suggest that you, you pick it up. It's very accessible and nice introduction um, to get up and running with, with Python and Pandas. So one of the things that, that people use Pandas for is for loading data into Python, especially larger data stored in CSV files or many different file formats. So here I have a CSV file containing about a half million rows, some minute bar data for um, a bunch of stocks that I'm just going to load in the Apple the Apple data. Um, so time series operations is, is one big reason why people use Pandas. So in this data, there's a column that contains um, the timestamps as strings. This is about five years of data. And I can remove that uh, date column from the data frame, convert it to uh, Pandas' timestamp format and set it as the index of the data frame. So now, um, so now the data frame represents a collection of time series. I've got a little helper function here to load some more data later. Uh, so there are a number of different um, indexing conveniences that Pandas gives you. So one is to be able to select um, all of the data points at a particular time across many days. So here if we wanted all of the 10 a.m. data, which is you know 15, um, 1500 GMT, I could say, you know, Apple bars at time, time 15, time is a Python uh, Python object, and I'm just looking at the first 10 rows, so we get all of the 10 o'clock data. I could also look at, say, you know, the price, all of the closing prices on uh, October 15th, 2009, by passing a string for the, for the date, and it selects out that subset of the time series. Um, Pandas makes it really easy to... Uh, to resample time series, so if I wanted to say take the close price column, resample it to monthly and compute the mean, median, and standard deviation, I can specify that really concisely and get back a data frame that contains three columns for each of the three um, things that I aggregated. Um, it also has a moving window function, so if I wanted to say compute a 10-day moving standard deviation, uh, compute uh, business daily samples of that and plot it, I can do that in just a couple of commands. Another area that is, is very important in the design of the library is in data alignment. So suppose that I have two time series which have a different set of dates, I can still add these together and it automatically aligns things behind the scenes. If I create a data frame from two unaligned time series, it aligns them and puts the, it conforms the union of the, uh, the indexes and creates a, creates a nice um, regularly indexed uh, rectangular table. Um, you can also do that with um, but combining together two data frames. So here I subsample um, the Apple bar data and the IBM bar data. I take a 90% subsample and then I concatenate them, them together and create a new data frame which contains um, all of the bar data for both of the stocks. And they, this result has a hierarchical index and I'll talk a bit more about that in a little bit. Another area that is very important is in missing data handling, because missing data is a fact of life uh, in many cases. So here's that um, little data frame from earlier. If I call the count method, it returns the number of non-missing values in each column. But with arithmetic methods, uh, statistical methods like sum and mean, uh, here I computed the sum of the columns and it excluded the missing values automatically. Here I computed the mean of the rows and it excluded the NAs that are found in the B column. You can also drop the NA. So here I said drop NA how equals all, and that only drops rows if they're all NA. But if I just do regular vanilla drop NA, it drops any row that contains an NA. I can also fill NAs with a miss it with a fixed value, uh, or if I have you know time series or some other form of ordered data, I can do interpolation type methods like fill forward. Um, here's an example where I take this daily data, resample it to four hourly frequency. I can you know, which computes, um, which gives you missing data uh, with no extra arguments, but I can convert to four hourly and then use the ffill method with limit three to fill forward um, three periods of data for each day. Um, Pandas is also excellent for doing um, SQL type uh, group by operations. It gives you a very flexible way to do group operations on data. So here I've got some um, essentially randomly generated data that represents a set of hypothetical stock portfolios. So I've got a data frame of some portfolios along with um, an associated industry classification for the stocks and also a currency uh, currency classification. So, so something that I might want to do is to group by industry and compute, uh, compute means um, for each of the columns in the data frame. To do that I say df group by industries dot mean 
and that gives me a new data frame containing industry means. Now uh, it can then be, say, plotted to create a nice, uh, a nice summary of, of what went on, uh, what's going on in those groups in the data. Um, I can augment that grouping with two group variables here, industries and currencies, and that gives me back um, a data frame where the, which is now indexed by industry and currency, and you have group means for each of those uh, pairs there. You can also apply transformations to the group. So here I group by industries and currency. I have a little z-score function which subtracts the mean, divides by the standard deviation. And now I use the apply method. That gives me a normalized result, which I can then group by the keys again and aggregate with mean and standard deviation and verify that within each group the mean is approximately zero and the standard deviation is, is one. So this whole hierarchical indexing business is a key feature in Pandas. So you might see this and say, well, okay, what's going on here? Uh, so the index is a is a, a data structure uh, which can be which can be modified, but it's uh, you know it's a fixed quantity on the data frame. So here, if I select the momentum column from the data frame, I get back now a series, a one-dimensional pandas object which is indexed by the same industry currency hierarchical index. I can also select just the tech uh, chunk of the data from the rows using the .ix indexing field. And I can just select out uh, that little slice from the data. Um, there are core methods for working with hierarchically indexed data, stack and unstack. So stack rotates um, data from the columns into the rows. So here, by stacking this, this data frame, I create a one-dimensional object, which now has three levels of indexing. Um, that can be then unstacked. So I can say unstack the industry field. And now I get back a new data frame, which has industries along the columns, and then currency and factor name in the index. Um, Pandas is also very good for doing uh, merge and join type operations as you might do in an SQL database. So here are some movie data uh, from the Movie Lens, uh, movie lens project. And so I've got a, it's a, yeah, it's a, you know, quite a bit of data. Um, and plus it's taking a lot longer to load because I'm recording a screencast. So here I have these three data frames which are linked together here. We have movie data, movie metadata. Uh, movie ratings and user metadata and these can all be uh, joined together in a very straightforward way. I use the pandas merge function to join the ratings and users and f further merge that merge result with the movie data to create um, a single uh, single data frame containing all of the relevant data that we want to aggregate. So we could then take that uh, group by title uh, compute the number of observations uh, for each title and then select out movies that received at least a thousand ratings in the data set for further analysis. So we call that uh, freak titles and that gives us back uh, uh, basically a big data structure of a list of list of movie titles. And then we could do something like group by title, take the rating column, compute group means of that, select just the frequently voted on titles, order by value and select the last 20 values. So these are the highest rated movies in the data set uh, that received at least a thousand ratings. Um, so we can then take those those titles, filter down the data set, take data data title, the movie titles, filter just to the set of highest rated titles. Um, you notice that Dr. Strangelove has a very long title, so I'm going to truncate that to 25 characters. And now I'm going to take that filtered uh, master data set, group by title and gender, compute mean ratings, and then unstack the gender field. So now I get a nice data frame illustrating how um, men and women voted on these highly rated, highly rated titles. Here, of course, we could change this from uh, mean to count, and we can see actually how many uh, ratings are in each of these groups. Um, Pandas actually makes this kind of you know, pivot table type operation even easier to do by using the pivot table method. I can just say, oh, I want to pivot, do form a pivot table on the ratings data, group by title and gender, aggregate with mean, and then I get a nice, um, sort of nicely indexed, uh, arranged pivot table out of the result. So doing things with group by is a little bit more by hand. Um, there's a large set of summary statistics and other ways that you can slice and dice and analyze um, tabular data. So if we use the uh, value counts method um, on the title column, that just gives us back a Panda series showing the um, number of movie ratings for each of the titles uh, sorted in descending order. So you can see that you know the Star Wars movies received a ton of 
ton of votes along with American Beauty, and that goes all the way down to the movies that only received a one one rating. Um, there's also methods like Describe, which gives you a summary, um, a bunch of summary statistics for the data, and that can of course be combined with um, the group by facility to get um, a bunch of statistics across different subsets of the data set. So this is just a, a quick overview of some things that you can do with Pandas. I uh, hope you find it interesting and use the library. Thank you.